For this video, we have imported a PSD file, and we want to create some parallax as well as add some wind to the background plants. So there's a few things we need to do here to make all of this work, and we'll start by adding bones to the background plants so that way we can implement wind. To get started with this, we want to locate those background plants. And in this case, if we drop the ground layer down, you'll see we have a folder called plants back. If we drop that down, we have access to all of these different layers that make up the background plants. So here we want to go in and add in bones for each of these layers. So that way we can apply physics and then eventually wind. So let's right click on plants back and choose to convert to bone. I also want to come down here to display, click once and choose to fade unselected layers. This will make the process of locating these layers easier. So if we go to the first layer under the bone layer, you'll see that it's colored while everything else is grayed out. And this will make isolating your plants a little bit easier as we add these bones. So right here we have the first plant. And with that now revealed to us where we need to add the bone, let's go back here to the bone layer. And we're going to hit A on the keyboard to grab the add bone tool. And I'll just come in and draw a little bone up like that. When I finish drawing my bones, I want to make a habit of hitting alt and clicking off or using the escape key to deselect the bone once we finish. Because all these bones should be isolated from one another. Nothing should be connected to each other unless if one plant has two bones, then those two bones should be connected. So let's keep going here. We have that plant. Now we're going to go to this plant right here. And I'm just going to add in the bones first and then we'll bind after the fact. So. With this now revealed, we can go back and use A on the keyboard and come in. And this time we're going to add two bones for this. So go up just like that with two bones. And I'm just gonna make sure that nothing is connected to each other. So nothing is parented with these two bones. So now we go to the third bush and it appears we have two different little things going on here. We have this one going up as well as this one. So we could try to add two sets of bones here. Let's start by going back here to the bone layer and I'm going to alt click off of that selected bone and then choose to come in and we'll add two bones like this. And then I'm going to alt click off and just add two more going up like this. So if we double check, you can see when I select this layer, it now looks like we have these two plants on one layer and we can go in here and do some linking. So now let's go to the next plant, which is going to be this background flower. Go back here to the bone layer, make sure we have the add bone tool, alt click off of that selected bone. And we can come in here and let's just add one bone for the flower going up like that. So there's your flower. The next bush we want to account for is this bigger one in the background. So let's go back here to the bone layer with the add bone tool, make sure we deselect the selected bone that we just worked with and then come in here and then we can add some bones going up like this. So two bones going up like that. We have this plant in the background and let's alt click before we draw this bone or two bones, I should say. So that way nothing is connected to each other. So there we go. We have this plant and then we have this one right back here and go back to the bone layer. Make sure we have the add bone tool. I'm just going to come in here, make sure I have no bones selected while I draw these out and just draw out the bones like that. Now we do have some background bushes here, but I think we can leave those as is because they seem tucked away in the background and I'm just not sure if we're gonna be able to really see the movement of these as well. So we're just going to use what we have here and run with that and we'll leave these last three without bones. So now let's go back here to the first layer under the bone layer and start the process of linking our bones. So I'm going to select the select bone tool and then click once on that bone that's representing that image and then come up here and choose to link your bones. Now we can go to the bush that's next on the list and we're just going to select both of those bones making up the bush and choose to link. You have 
this bush right here, which is a little bit more complicated. We have a couple sets of bones. So we're just going to come in here and link those. Then we have one bone here. Just come in and link that. Two bones for the bigger bush. Link those. Then we have this plant right back here. Do a link. And then we're coming in here to this plant. So we'll come in and link those bones. And then the last three bushes should be left alone. From here, if we wanted to just make sure everything is working, we could go on the timeline here and just play around with some of this to make sure that it's moving the way we want it to. And it looks like, for the most part, here it is. So that's looking pretty good. So we can just go back here now and start to add in the physics. So with the bone layer selected, I'm going to use the Select Bone tool and use Control A or Command A to select all the bones. Come over here to Bone Constraints and under Bone Dynamics, let's enable Angle and then activate Wind. And then we can go ahead and close this. When I go back through and play this, you can see that we have some connections here with these two bones. You might not want that effect to be in play. And if that's the case, you would probably want to go back here and just remove two sets of these bones and just put one in its place and have one set control it. In fact, I might just do that right now. So going back here, I'm actually going to grab these two, or actually I'll just grab this set right here since that's the one I was thinking might be a little bit too much and we'll remove it. And then I'm just going to grab this right here and bring it more towards the center of both of these bushes. So now if we play this again, you can see that it doesn't have that effect where it's kind of being squished in. It just looks a little bit more natural with the wind. So as we are working with this, we can go up here to what is called the force option. And this allows us to adjust the wind in real time. So if we start to play this out, we have 240 frames here. So it's going to play up to that point and then repeat. But that gives us some options here to play around, for instance, with the direction. So if we came in here and we adjusted the direction of the wind, not only is the preview arrow changing up here, but you can see that we have some things changing with how the plants are reacting as well. So if we wanted the wind to blow to the left, we could definitely do that, or we can switch it to the right. Just depends on how you want to do this, or go down or up or wherever you want to go. The strength will adjust just how powerful the wind is. So as you can see here, I'm able to bring it back so it's a little bit more subtle, or we can go really extreme and have it really windy. So you can play around with those options as well. And then you have your turbulent amplitude. So if we come in here, you can see that we can make it more turbulent, less turbulent. If you want the turbulent frequency to be more so that there's just more sudden gusts of wind to make it look a little bit more chaotic, we can do that. And you also have gravity. So if you want to make things maybe look a little bit more floppy, we could increase the gravity here and you can see now we have kind of more of a floppy look with the wind and if we were to increase the strength this would probably be a little bit more obvious as you can see here we can come in here and have some definite differentiation with that and the gravity strength can play a part too so if you don't have the gravity pointing down as you can see it's going to be much more bouncy and then if we put it down it's going to be a little bit more grounded towards the ground. So there's a lot we can do here with this. It just depends on the effect and how you want it all to play out. So I'm just going to come in here and play around with these options a little bit, and we can settle on something about like this. I like it, it's subtle. It doesn't add too much movement to the scene, but it's enough to give off the illusion that wind is in the shot. So now that we have the trees animating, let's add that parallax to the scene. I'm going to come back here to display and choose to unselect fade unselected layers. So that way we have everything back in color. It's just a little bit easier to see this as we add the parallax. Now with Moho, you have the ability to view up to four different camera angles at once of the scene. In this case, we only need two to help with creating the parallax. And you can do so by coming down here to the bottom above the timeline. And I'm just going to click on the side by side view. So now we're viewing the same scene. We just have a different workspace camera looking at this, allowing us to work with the animation. And in the case of this second view, I'm going to come over here to my workspace tools and click on orbit. And then just click and drag and start to rotate this around. And we can get a 3D view of the scene and 
what this currently looks like. And as you can see, it's all on one plane. It's all on the same Z axis. Everything is going to just move at the same time. It's all flat. However, we can easily change this by coming over here and start to adjust the layers. Now we've split this up so that it's a little bit easier to work with. As an example, we have OL plants, ground, and trees. We can just take the whole group for OL plants and bring it up closer to the camera. And you can very easily just come over here to your layer options and you'll see at the top we have position for X, Y, and Z. And then you could try to bring up the Z properties and you can see here that it's starting to adjust this. However, I think you'll find pretty quickly here that that can become a little bit cumbersome to deal with once you have your entire scene laid out. So what we're going to do here is instead of just moving everything and having to readjust the whole scene, is if we hold down Shift and Alt, and then we click and drag on this to bring it up, you can see that we're bringing it out more closer to the camera. And once we release, it'll snap back to where it was. However, if we look on the second view here, you'll see that it's actually separated from the background. And that's because when we hold down Alt and Shift and move an object or a layer, we are actually adjusting the Z properties, but at the same time, Moho is resizing the layer to what we originally had the design set at. So that way it doesn't break the original design of the scene. And this can be very useful when you want to, once you have your artwork set up, go in and add some depth. So let's just keep going here. We can go down to the ground group next, and I'm just going to collapse plants back and we'll start with plants one. So plants one is right here, and we're just going to come in and bring that up a little bit as well. And just to note too, if we click again on the OL plants and go to your layer translation here, you can see that the Z property is set, and it's set to 2.1. So we probably don't want these next group of plants to come out past 2.1 because we want that first group to be closer to the camera and then the second group to be closer than it was before, but not as close as the first. So it's just something to keep in mind as you continue along here. Let's go to plants one, hold down alt and shift, and we're just going to drag down to bring this out again. And you can see now it's at 1.1, but I can continue to work with this. So I can just repeat this and keep repeating it until I get a value that I would prefer in terms of distance. So maybe 1.6 will work, and of course, just to remind you, you can always come over here and double check to see how this is going to look in 3D space. Now the trunk, along with the ground, are going to be left alone. We're going to leave those at default. That's where we plan to have our characters on the scene. And that's going to be at a Z depth of zero. And that's a good default to have. So you have your foreground objects, then you're going to have the actual ground and trunk, which will remain at zero. That's going to be where all of our action is probably going to take place. And then we're going to jump to plants back. And now instead of bringing it towards the screen, we can put it further away. So we'll grab the layer tool once again and come in here and we're just going to move up holding down alt and shift. And as you can see, we're coming in here and I just moved it a little bit but we can see here now that it's moved beyond the background and we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that we have the background back the furthest because that's going to make the most sense. But let's just keep going here. Next we have the trees, which are also going to be in the background and they're probably going to be a little bit further in the background compared to the bushes that we just moved. So let's use alt and shift and move up and we're going to make sure that we push those trees beyond those bushes just like that. And then we have the background, which we can also come in and just make sure we move beyond like this, holding an alt and shift. So that way everything works out in terms of parallax. I'm going to come back and click on single view. And if I were to take any of the camera tools here, you can see I can come in now and create this nice looking parallax based on how I have set up the depth for the scene. You can also, if you want, hold down Alt and click and drag here and you can zoom in, you know, go into the scene, which can also help with the parallax or you can move out.
So that can be very useful as well. And all this can be animated. So you can see right now I'm actually animating this out on the scene. And we have the wind blowing. And you would just have like this nice push into maybe a character sitting on the log. Now one more thing to point out, especially since we're talking about depth, is the ability to create depth of field. And this can actually be viewed in real time now in Moho 14. So if we go up to File and go down to Project Settings, we have the ability to enable depth of field. So let's go ahead and just enable this. And you'll see right away we have changes occurring on the canvas. You can come in here and adjust these parameters. So if you don't want this to be as blurry, maybe you just want it to be a little bit softer like that, you could do something like that. Actually, I'm going to adjust this just a little bit more so it's a little bit more obvious. So let's go to 10 and click OK. And you can see that it's definitely more blurry. And as we zoom in, the background becomes less blurry. And I can demonstrate this more if I just continue to zoom in with the camera. So you can see as I zoom in more and more, the background becomes sharper. And if we zoom out, it becomes blurrier based on that depth of field and where everything is at in terms of where we have the camera. So there you go. That's how you can apply wind, parallax, and depth of field to a scene inside of Moho.